ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Maybe. Sometimes. Tell me about this. I want to know more. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Holy cow. We've had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just online here trying to find cheap airport parking <laughs> at LAX <laughs> oh, for tomorrow. You told a funny joke. Yeah, it's not going well. <laughs> but I guess compared to the rates that you pay for general parking in yes. New York City, I yes. shouldn't complain. That is, is that, that correct? Is correct? I mean, before you can, yes. what, what you were saying was $14 a day. Yeah. Before you can even get into New York City, you have to pay that much, like for a tunnel. Oh and then it goes up from right. there. So yeah. I, I can't, crazy. it's been a while since I did overnight parking here, but I'm pretty sure at Newark Airport, it's way more than that. 14 doesn't hmm. seem bad for overnight. Well, multiply by 10. Well, do but. they have those really cheap lots that are like far away and you have to take a shuttle bus? Yeah, but I hate those. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a friend who you can say, I will take you out for a $100 dinner if you drop me off and pick me up at the airport and then you pocket the 40 No way. That not, is unfortunate. Not between here and L.A. Are you kidding me? I, I could, you know, there would be nobody I could pay that would be willing to do that. <laughs> you know, a friend who enjoys driving? <laughs> nope. In <LA>. Nobody. Uh, <laughs> I remember LAX. I'm feeling all nostalgic now. Yes. Oh, it's still a nightmare. It's, it's, it's is even it? worse. Oh, my gosh. I spent it's lots crazy. of, I had a back way in that went by, like, the place with the giant donut. Mm, yeah. No, it is uh, still... <sighs> craziness over there but i'm excited i'm going to brave the craziness because i'm yeah. going to vancouver tomorrow british columbia for those people who don't know where vancouver is <laughs> um, there's also actually in all fairness there's two vancouvers there's one in washington state but i'm going mm. back home she's going, going to the real home. one the one in yeah. canada <laughs> yeah genuine i'm so excited because like it's supposed to be nice and sunny there for a few days which is really rare this time of year yeah. It's usually pouring rain, so and all the fall colors are out, which is something we don't get in Southern California. So I'm excited. I like packed sweaters, which you know I haven't been out of my closet in over <laughs> you know two years. <laughs> <laughs> I went and bought myself a rain jacket just in case, Ooh. and yeah, I'm all <laughs> excited. <laughs> so you haven't been back in two years? No, can you believe it? Wow. Two years since I've been back. Yeah. Wow. Is my so dad... is this just for a visit, or are you doing something? Well, I'm doing a little promo work for my book. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice. And, yeah, so I'm meeting up with some people, and then uh, it's my dad's birthday on Halloween, so I'll stay through and celebrate. And then my girlfriends and I are heading up to Whistler for a couple days. So oh, nice. Yeah. It's kind of a little, uh, you know, the whole trip is... Is a little retreat for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, Are you excited. feeling in need of retreat? I, I'm I'm feeling in need of a retreat from Southern California, not from my family, but from Southern California. <laughs> it is still a retreat to degrees. a place that has ketchup chips. <gasps> okay, I kid you not. I have it all planned out. The minute I get off the plane and get my luggage and walk through customs, there's like a Tim Hortons donuts coffee shop so I'm going to stop there and then across from the Tim Hortons donuts is a little you know one of those little convenience store things so I'm going to go in there and get my ketchup chips and then wow. <laughs> on the way home to my mom and dad's is a Greek restaurant so I'm going to stop there I got it all planned out wow. I'm so excited <laughs> so. trying to think if there's anything I mean I haven't been home to California in ages I'm trying to think if there's something there that I would stop for that I would have to get some food stuff. Not I can't in and think out? of anything. Huh? Everybody says in and out burger. Yes. Yes. That's what I would do. I would go to the nearest in and out burger. Mm -hmm. I miss I don't those. Know. That was, I was really, I came to those relatively late in life though. I don't know if yeah. Thousand Oaks was known for any particular culinary delicacy. Mexican? The barbecue beef that the Methodist men used to make for the annual carnival, but I don't think that's gettable anymore. <laughs> mm, yeah. Don't think so. No, I, there's, I've got a whole list of places that I am, I'm heading to, to, <laughs> <laughs> that I've, that I've desperately missed in the last two years. So it's going to be, Aww. you know, a whirlwind tour of culinary delights and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and 
walks in the in the leaves and yeah i'm i'm looking forward to it <laughs> well we expect frequent social media missives on that oh, and a report trust. when you get back <laughs> yeah. tell us your checklist well, I'll be, I'll when you get back i'll be actually podcasting from there next week because i don't get back until Ooh. so i'm there for about 10 days we're so. international now that's yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> so well, well, good. Well, should we kick off today then? Let's kick off today's yes. much more boring, totally, nation totally podcast. domestic podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no ketchup chips. Nope. Um, Sorry. Well, we'll say hello and welcome to Parenting Roundabout, a weekly podcast about the things that parents are talking about, obsessing about, and complaining about right now. I'm Catherine Haleko, and with me today are Terry Morrow. Hello. And Nicole Eridix. Hello. Feeling rather chipper today. <laughs> chipper? Chipper. Yes. So today Anticipate. on the podcast, we are going to talk about personal warning labels on our Friday speed round. We will hear a uncharacteristically chipper interview with Robert Rebel Hudson, right? <laughs> That's correct. Um, and we'll do some shameless self-promotion. But first, from the be careful what you wish for files, <laughs> Nicole's daughter has a new bow. Mm-hmm. So, uh-huh. I'm sure she's happy we're talking about it on our podcast, too. <laughs> yeah, because she listens to them all. <laughs> Does she? Hi, Kristen. <laughs> so, so happy for you, honey. Yeah. <laughs> so that brought up a question. Terry, do you want to take it away? <laughs> what the question is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. This is not a topic that's often come up at my house, romance, Um, and I often wish that my daughter especially could find someone. She does also, um, but not that she's like going out too hard looking for one, but if one should drop, you know, at our doorstep, that'd be keen. (laughs) But, you know, as I think about what's involved in having your kid dating somebody, and especially somebody that you did not have any particular control over choosing, I often feel like maybe this is one of those things where when it happens, it's like, yay, it's happened. And now I have a whole new box Mm -hmm. of worries. So now I'm worried that my kid's not dating. And then when my kid's dating, I'm going to have so much more to worry about. I mean, I was a kid dating at one time. I know what I did. I will have a lot to worry about. (laughs) So, uh, and I was a pretty, I, I was a pretty well-controlled teenager. So, uh, you know, um, so I thought I would ask you guys, do you, uh, how is it when your kid <laughs> starts dating? Is it act, everything that you dreamed it would be? Are you glad that it happened? Or do you wish that you could have micromanaged things a little better? You know, uh, been more specific about the particular bow yeah, or or do you you know are you happy that it's happened or do you wish that maybe you could go back to those days when you had a different set of worries? Nicole, I don't mm. know how much you can talk about this right now. <laughs> Let's talk well, about your son and his girlfriend then. <laughs> yeah, well, my son, I I hate to say this because I don't mean it to sound sexist. Yes, my son was a different experience than what I'm right. having with my daughter right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, my son was more outgoing. He had a wider group of friends. There were always girls in his groups of friends. So he started Mm -hmm. dating at a relatively young age. I mean, dating at that age was really just going to the movies together. Yeah. Um, But he started, you know, hanging out with girls at a younger age. And I don't know, I feel like Yeah, we had decisions that we had to make along the way that we hadn't had to do before. But he was also an easy kid, too, relatively easy. So if we said, you know, be home at 11, he was home at 11. Okay, so maybe sometimes he was home at (laughs) 11.05. You know, my daughter, on the other hand, I feel Uh like girls are a whole other, (laughs) you know, um, well, and for starters, I mean, my daughter is starting a little later than what my son did. So she's almost 17 and Mm -hmm. she is now in kind of her first um, 
semi-formal relationship. Uh-huh. <laughs> and but you know, leading up to it, so for the past two years, there's been this whole angst over, you know, will I yeah. or will I not have a boyfriend and will I date and nobody likes me? And so, you know, there's all this preamble to it. And then now that it's finally happened, now that she has somebody that she's interested in and vice versa, it's now I'm like, okay, what's this guy like? Do I like him? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, you know, how much time should I let her spend with him? Um, how much time should they be spending alone? You know, there's always yeah. like a little, like you said, micromanagement issues. Like the other, the other night, it was, a, it was a Sunday night and she had stayed home all day working on her homework. And then uh-huh. in the evening, or I think it was like six, six thirty, or she, <laughs> I come downstairs and she had had a shower and I'm like, okay, this is weird. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> she usually doesn't have a shower at six o'clock on a Sunday night. Yeah. And so I knew something was up. I knew that, you know, something was going on. I said, what, what are you doing? Are you, you know, planning on going out? And she says, yeah, well, I got an invitation to go over to his house. And I'm like, okay, are his parents there? <laughs> so then like, it just like starts this whole like, you know, kind of yeah. array of issues that come up. And then, yeah, his parents are going to be there. And I'm like, well, it's a Sunday night. You can't go out on a Sunday night. You have school tomorrow. And she's like, well, I've done all my homework. And I'll just be there for two hours to visit. And uh, yeah, it was just, and my husband wasn't home. And I was like, who, who somebody, somebody to help me make this decision. I can't do this alone. <laughs> is it like you want to be cool mom? But then on the other hand, you... I know can think of so many reasons why it's a bad idea. And it's only like the third sort of quote unquote, you know, yeah, informal date they've had. And I'm already stressing, Oh my gosh, her grades are going (laughs) to plummet. She's, you know, it's a, you know, I shouldn't be letting her go out on a Sunday night. What kind of mother am I? And in the meantime, I, we didn't really have those issues with my son. So it's just like, this whole other ball of wax that we're dealing yeah. with. And, um, but the, in, on the upside, we actually do know the boy yeah. and we know his family and we've known them for Ooh, years. That's good. And, um, and they the mom is just as, uh, anxious as I am apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you guys so, can commiserate. Yeah. We can, uh, work together to keep tabs on them. So, Good. but then, you know, and then again, I'm like, okay, she's almost 17. Like, you know, how much, yeah. you know, I mean, I still, I know she still needs guidance, but yeah, you know, it's not like she's 13. So, and then there's the whole emotional thing of it too, because you know, if anything goes wrong, it's going to be on you oh, the, to I mean, clean up the mess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> totally. I mean, yeah, but, but I'm, I think I'm used to that. I'm more experienced with that. <laughs> Because, yeah, you know, so like with my son, we didn't have the whole preamble leading up to stuff, but we certainly uh-huh. had a lot of, you know, the disaster relief. <laughs> 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 we provided a lot of disaster relief. Yes. <laughs> afterwards, <laughs> I feel very skilled at that. We have the equipment, we have the supplies to go in. <laughs> we know exactly what to do. We got the game plan. <laughs> when nice. disaster strike I don't mean to oh, make light man. of anything that's happening in the real world right now but um you know whereas my daughter we haven't had that experience yet yes <laughs> so, I <laughs> yeah so it's all kind of um every day is a new day just when you think yeah. you've got this parenting thing down yeah uh, it's like you want your kid to have these experiences but at the same time hey I don't I know. know. I wish I wish I could really truly micromanage that sort of thing and like find a nice person and you know, right. set them up in my living room and uh, <laughs> just just be in charge of everything because it's it's like you know right, because that's the problem. I mean, you can't, you even if you if you wanted to as you do, yeah. you can't. Mm-hmm. So. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard. Especially, you know, when people, when you, when you're older and out of school, it's really hard to find somebody. And, you know, I've been, we've been looking for like singles activities to go to, but she doesn't want to go by herself. And I can't blame her. I, I wouldn't want to go by myself and I would be nervous for her to go by herself. Mm-hmm. Here, go to this place with a bunch of single strangers, you know, <laughs> get mm-hmm. home safe. 
And, uh, but you know, I can't go with her now at her age. So yeah. it's complicated. It is. Are you dealing with this sort of thing, Catherine? Just a little bit. I mean, um, my daughter's 15 and, you know, she certainly has friends who have had boyfriends um, before this. Um, she hasn't really. And, you know, when she's gone to homecoming and things like that, it's just been with a big group of girls. And, yeah. and in fact, she had a, a friend who's a boy ask her if he should ask her friend oh, to, no. home, to homecoming. And I mean, she wasn't Thor. interested in this, in this boy, but um, uh-huh. she's just friends with him. And um, he wanted to know if, if she thought he could ask the, this other girl to homecoming. And she's uh. like, well, she really wants to go with the girls. You know, she wants to, mm-hmm. she wants to go with the group, but you should, you should talk to her at the dance. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, well. but you know, we had just the other day, she, she said, can, she was have some girlfriends were coming over to hang out. She's like, and can these, these two boys come too? And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then, so then it was going to be like five girls and two boys. And then all of a sudden it was, well, there's two more boys that want to come. I'm like, oh, okay. Can we, <laughs> can we limit this number? And. <laughs> and then they're in the basement and I'm like thinking, oh, oh the, you know, I know there's a couple beers in the fridge down there. Should oh, I take yeah. them? Should I remove them? Like, oh, <laughs> and you know, what time it's are stressful. they going to, what time are they going to leave? And, you know, do all the other parents of all the girls know about this and are yep. they okay with oh, it? Like yep. all that stuff yep. comes up. I mean, the good news is that my house is like a leaky sieve where you can hear everything yes. <laughs> that's going on. And I was texting with my sister, like there's eight teenagers in my basement and they're <laughs> boys. And and I said, well, the good news is I can hear everything. Cause you know, there's no, <laughs> it's just an yeah. old house. And she said, yeah, but what about all the like nooks and crannies in your oh, base no, in your God. basement? And I said, yeah, but that's why I have spiders down there. <laughs> She's like, well played. <laughs> yeah, bring out the spiders and let the yes. girls know. Yes. <laughs> oh, we so. had an issue with spiders in the basement recently. <laughs> we just, go with any you of might want to stick to this, you know, center of the room and keep yeah. the lights on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a very natural way of deterring teenagers, you know, so yes. you want to come across as the, because the, the, the issue, the other issue too, is you want to come across as the strict bad mom that, you know, nobody wants to come and hang out at your house and everybody's afraid of you. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was thinking about like, would I rather they all be at my house or would I yeah. rather she be somewhere right. else? And I guess, you yeah. know, it's good for them to be here. I mean, we have, um, an air hockey slash ping pong table down there and, we have a an old arcade game, so those are like boy friendly, but yeah. wholesome <laughs> things they can do. Just as long as there's no empty beer bottle that right, can be spun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. That was the other thing. I'm like, I have. We don't have any food. We don't have any like snacks that are, you know, teenage yeah. boy suitable. And she she uh. found a box of popsicles. She's like, we each ate like five popsicles. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That's that's all right with me. <laughs> as much as it's 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 kind of, you know, oh you know, I've gotta post them and I've gotta worry about what they're doing and there's a couple of things I learned ha- with my son and that was that um I would much much rather have them at my house. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and if I supplied food and beverages, you know, appropriate age be- beverages. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, they were more than happy to be there. And um, we just kind of set down the expectations with him early on. Like, you know, if your friends come over and there's a big disaster, you clean up. Right. <laughs> or, yeah. You know, if something happens and he and he even now admits, you know, OK, so things weren't totally wholesome at certain <laughs> times, <laughs> but they didn't bring it into the house. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't yeah. they didn't bring it. In, onto the property they knew that they couldn't so they didn't so yeah I don't know it just I guess that's reassuring 
Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> you know, teenagers are going to be up to no good, period. So, yeah, <laughs> just, I guess. Just uh, keep it away from my house and we're all good. <laughs> Unless, These of course, are... you need a ride, I'll give you a ride. <laughs> These but... are the times I'm glad that whenever my son gets together with his friends, all the moms are there, too. It's like I never yeah. have to worry about that. Yeah. No, we, yeah. And we, there's, <laughs> there were some times that were pretty kind of tough and touchy with him because they don't know how much to tell the other parents. But, <laughs> yeah. It is tricky. It's very tricky. Normal, typical kid problems. But, you know, so much different than when we were teenagers because I know I didn't tell my mom a thing and I never had yeah. people over at my house. I always just left the house. And, you just uh, got on that ski do and took off. I just took <laughs> off. I strapped on my snowshoes and I was out of there. And what she didn't know didn't hurt her. <laughs> wow. It's scary now to think of being on the other end of that, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, and I mean, this is how I feel about the driving, too. Like, I know it's it's going to be good for me eventually when <laughs> when she's yeah. driving but the process of getting there is just terrifying it really yeah. Is. yeah yeah but you'll love it give it <laughs> give it like give yourself a month to sort of get used to it and after that you won't think about it again <laughs> <laughs> i made my yeah. husband take her out yesterday because i was like she needs practice and i just <laughs> <laughs> I will go sit at the ice rink for an hour and a half. You take her driving. <laughs> Seems like a reasonable division of labor. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was a fair trade. So yeah, and it was freezing no. at that rink. <laughs> but we do it. Yeah. We have a fireplace at that rink. So yeah. Carrie, doesn't is your is your son still dating his girl? Didn't he have a yeah, girlfriend? Yeah, he one has. Time? He has like. Like, how do you manage that? An extremely low maintenance relationship. It basically involves saying that he's she's his girlfriend. Oh, okay. That's pretty much <laughs> the extent of it. And, you know, he, he put a very sweet thing on Facebook, wishing her a happy anniversary. And, you know, he kisses her on the cheek whenever he sees her and refers Aww. to her as his girlfriend. But that's, you know, when they do stuff, they do stuff with the group, with all the moms and stuff like that. I don't think they've ever been on a date by themselves. They mm -hmm. might've been, we might've been all in a movie theater together and the parents were sitting behind or something, but, and neither of them seems to want that. And both sets of parents are like, this is nice that I don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. Because, yeah. But at the same time, part of me says, but you know, is he ever going to have a, a more real relationship and will it be with this girl or will it be with somebody else? Does having this sort of, you know, in name only relationship get in the way of that? I don't know, but I really don't need to worry about the, that with him right now. That's down the road, mm -hmm. way right. down the road. And for now, and it's, honestly, it's, you know, for for a lot of typical kids, that in name only thing is is what they do. Yeah, right? I mean, obviously not at his age, but yeah, you know, yeah. it's kind of like a fifth grade level relationship. <laughs> you know, where you right. tag her and say, you know, you're my girlfriend, right. I'm your boyfriend, right. and that's. <laughs> He gave her a locket one year, and that seemed to have sealed the deal. Oh, right. And since then, there's been very little. <laughs> hmm. But, uh, you know, but I hmm. I think my daughter would be happy to have even a in-name-only thing. Yeah. But it's just nothing has worked out, and I feel really bad. And I think back to the things that I did when I was her age to try to meet somebody. And I also think back to how annoyed I was when my mother said, get out and do things and meet people. So... Right. You know, I had much more wherewithal to do that myself, um, you know, but you do have to get to a point, I think, at least as an adult. I mean, when you're a kid, there's a whole different social structure around dating and all that. But when you're an adult, you have to get to the place where going out and meeting people is a higher priority than, than just not. sitting home <laughs> right. and being comfortable, you yeah. know, and until you're at that point, you're just never going to do it. And well, you know, in the abstract, I think she would like to have a relationship and she sees, you know, things on TV and she sees things in movies and thinks, why don't I have that? She hears other people her age getting married, but it's not quite to the point where, yep, got to do something about it. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> it's to the point yeah. where, you know, I, it's like if Amazon would ever have a boyfriend delivery system, man, could they clean up <laughs> just, you know, 
you know, we've talked about online dating, which is something that was, you know, when I was her age and looking, there were, I think, I think it was mostly through classified ads. I mean, there was that sort of, I know I, I, I met somebody through like a Catholic, Catholic singles thing, but it wasn't, there was no online yeah. at that time. I right. think it was, you know, you called a phone number or you got a, a brochure or I didn't even remember how, how you got it. Yeah. Uh, but now there's all these opportunities, theoretically, to meet somebody, you know, from the comfort of your computer. Mm -hmm. But she's not quite ready to do that. Yeah. It's a little embarrassing to do that, maybe. Is it? Well, it's hard. I, I mean, I feel like it's, I, I've never done it, but, you know, <laughs> but people I know, have, I mean, you know, you have to, you're setting yourself up for a lot of rejection mm -hmm. and yeah. also having to reject people exactly so both yes. of those are uncomfortable yes. and hard and it's embarrassing when your mother's at the next table <laughs> texting you, <laughs> you now okay? say this right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah which is how it would have to be but i don't know i still have talked on this before that i think there's a really a real market niche for parents of shy adults Mm -hmm. to match them up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, you know, there should be, I know, I know matchmaking is bad and arranged marriages are bad and it's best if you go out and find you. But if you have, have people who are not comfortable going out and doing things and meeting people and finding people, you know, perhaps they could find each other through some mechanism. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Investors, call me. Let's right. get this Let's going. Get it. <laughs> Mothers of shy sons, call me if you're in northern New Jersey area. <laughs> that will be Mama next, Toot on Twitter. Look me up. The next goal yeah. of this podcast is <laughs> that would be super starting, micro managing starting fine, Terry's fine business. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I just you know, there's somebody for everybody, right? You just have to, but uh, you know, I was sad when in high school when really. And when nothing was going on and, and I felt like she was missing out on things, I don't think she felt it too much then, but I did. You know, I remembered, I always had boyfriends in high school. and So, you know, you, you kind of miss those milestones, but then it would have been really difficult in a lot of ways too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I guess you got to be comfortable with what's, what is, and then deal with what comes up when it comes up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As you all. I'll live vicariously through you guys. And I'll thank you. Gee, I'm glad I didn't have to deal with that. Exactly. That sounds exactly. really difficult. Right. <laughs> as exciting as this is, you know that it will likely end. And yes, yes it, that's not going to be the fun part. My kids come straight home from work and sit home and watch TV. I know exactly where they are and what they're doing. Yeah. It just as my daughter was leaving for school this morning. Oh, by the way, we're going to hang out for an hour after school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is it going to be in a populated area? <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing it's daylight, but <laughs> are there surveillance cameras that I can tap into? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure your GPS is turned on. <laughs> I know it's exactly. <laughs> but it was funny the other night. I have to quickly tell you this because um, <laughs> the boy. The boy is actually the younger brother of my son's best friend. That's how oh. we know the family. And uh -huh. so on Friday night when she and the boy hung out for yeah. the first time, we all had them on the GPS. <laughs> we were all, and we were swapping text messages back and forth. Where are they now? What do you think they're doing? Oh, my. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> they are going to find a way to ditch you. <laughs> they, were, they were, you know, and then... My son's friend was like, "Should I do a drive by? Should I go?" <laughs> <laughs> and then, and apparently, his mother was tracking him as well. And I guess at one point, she was like, "It's getting late. What are you doing at the park?" <laughs> at home, <laughs> I see you. Uh, so there was all this state uh, of parent surveillance. Yeah, there was. I, so I said to my husband, I said, really, in reality, between two sets of parents and two older brothers, yeah. <laughs> they're going to have a hard time circumventing us. We're at least putting <laughs> some obstacles in their path. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just let them know you're going to be doing that. And that, that alone should be sufficient. A deterrent. Yes. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, I mean, you know, their teenagers are going to figure out a way to like ditch us at some point, but um, yeah. until then, until they get more savvy. <laughs> See, it sounds like you should come with a warning label. We'll surveil all teenage <laughs> activities. <laughs> That's a really good one. <laughs> yes. Nice segue yeah. into our speed round. Yes, that is correct. So I guess I t- I just want to use that label like right now for the speed <laughs> round, which is if everyone had to wear a warning label, what would yours say? And I'm thinking like, you know, teen detective or something like yes, that. Yes, I'm watching you <laughs> is what right. your label would say. Yeah, caution. Uh, I don't know. I have, Watch your step. I have a GPS <laughs> tracker and I know how to use it. <laughs> I know how to use it. <laughs> Yes, uh, that, I think I think that would be probably, and I think if you were to ask my husband, he would agree. <laughs> Definitely, I am very much into the teen surveillance techniques. Yeah. So, <laughs> how about yeah. you guys? What would your warning label say if you had one? Well, I'd say mine would have to be something like "contents under pressure <laughs> may explode at any moment." <laughs> I had myself one of those big blow ups on the weekend Uh-oh. over just a stupid thing, but it was the latest stupid thing, and it was the stupid thing that tri- that uh, you know the straw that broke the camel's back. Last, it was yeah. the last straw. Mm-hmm. I didn't recognize it was the last straw until my back was breaking, and then I just blew up like crazy over it, and just there was cursing, there was stomping, there was slamming things. I slammed my laptop lid down so hard that the screen stopped working, and then I was having a fit over that. So it's like I feel like most of the time I'm cool, I'm keeping it together, I got my stress under control, and then all of a sudden, you know, the contents are deceptively under pressure, mm-hmm. and anything might trip That's it. the, right. uh, the wire. No one and knows then what that You want to be. be out of the way. So yes, I think it would be a good good reminder to everybody that... You know, mm-hmm. although I may seem to be safe, probably you should back up <laughs> and wear eye protectors and, you know, open a window. How about you, Catherine? Have you got a warning label? I think mine is probably something like let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because probably the thing I hate most is being woken up when I am sleeping and and when I don't need to be woken up Mm -hmm. (laughs) like a couple weeks. Did I tell you the story a couple weeks ago, my daughter and her, my daughter's friend sent a group text on like Saturday night that said, Mm -hmm. um, Hey, I got, um, I reserved a tennis court tomorrow morning so we can all go play. It's Uh at 8am. And oh. so she comes to me at like 11 p.m. <laughs> and says, "We're gonna we're gonna play tennis tomorrow morning. Can you take me?" I'm like, oh, okay, you know, Sunday morning. So I'm yeah. like, all right, fine. You know, it's good that you wanna play tennis. So uh, so you know, we set our alarm. We get up um, early on Sunday morning, and. Of course, my daughter's slow, and we're leaving a little bit late. And um, and so I said, well, text her and just tell her that you're on your way. So mm-hmm. she texts her friend. She says, you know, we're on our way, but we're going to be a couple minutes late. And her friend texts back, you're on your way where? And <laughs> she says, to play to play tennis with you. And the friend says, oh, I was just kidding about that. I don't have a tennis court. (gasps) What? That's not a joke. She goes to friend jail for a while. furious, you know. (laughs) And it wasn't my daughter's fault. You know, she didn't understand that it was a joke. And and she said in the text, like, yeah, I want to play. I'll be there, you know. So it was on the friend to, at that point, say... Oh, just kidding. But she didn't. <laughs> wow. And never, uh, sorry for the confusion, you know. <laughs> wow. Which... Are you now trading an event to get this girl oh out of bed? Oh, my gosh. I might have <laughs> to. And say, oops, 
I really don't want to give her a ride anywhere ever for any reason. At yeah, this point. I should think so. Wow. Damn, yeah. Oh, we were just kidding about picking you up. I'm sorry. You didn't understand that. <laughs> exactly. Oh. JK. <laughs> yep. Yikes. Yeah. So that's not yeah. pretty. the worst part. I would need a warning label for that. For sure the worst part was the wake up, you know. I mean. Yeah. Oh, sure. <sighs> wow. So did you go like TP or house or something? <laughs> I should have just. With your extra just time? parked in front of her house and blared the car horn to make sure she wasn't sleeping. <laughs> time to go! <laughs> many, many, many crank phone calls. Mm-hmm. Except yeah. that would just wake up her I mom. know. Yeah. Well. Well, no. Not she has a cell phone. Cell that's phones. right. Yeah. <laughs> Who calls the house anymore? <laughs> right. Especially <laughs> teenagers. Yep. Well, so mine. I don't know about you guys, but I can think of many, many more warning labels that are... Yes. Worthy of attaching to my forehead. So. <laughs> we are dangerous women. We yes. need many warning labels. <laughs> yes. Skull and crossbones. <laughs> for the waking up early oh, one. Goodness. Yes. Next time we should talk about potential logos. Yes. Um, <laughs> what would it look like? <laughs> well, good fun. And remember, you can hear a new speed round every Monday through Thursday. And now we move into the interview segment of our podcast today. I had a chance to chat with Robert Rummel Hudson, who we talk to about once a month. He's the author of Skylar's Monster, and he blogs at Fighting Monsters with Rubber Swords and also at Support for Special Needs. And actually, you know what? The topic that we happen to land on fits very well with what we've been talking about today. Let's hear what he had to say. So what's on your mind this month, Rob? Well, it's been funny because it's been kind of up and down. Um, yeah, things started off recently with the whole uh, Me Too awareness campaign uh, for yeah. um, sexual assault, sexual harassment. Um, uh-huh. And I, Skylar had been watching that kind of go by on Facebook, I think. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, she processes. Uh, and I, and you can right. kind of watch it. Um, you can see her kind of watching what's happening out in the world and sort of processing how it applies to her. Yeah. So shortly after that, uh, after that whole thing kind of kicked off and really mm-hmm. kind of set fire to uh, social media, right. she and I had a conversation about it because she kept seeing it and she asked me what it was about. Uh-huh. And so I had post, I posted a little thing um, with her permission, basically talking about how for me, Maybe the hardest part of seeing the, the the Me Too confessions, we're thinking about how many we weren't seeing, how many yeah. uh, young women and older women, too, who have uh, intellectual disabilities, developmental disabilities, mm-hmm. um, where maybe they're not being heard. Maybe they're not, yeah. they're not making those confessions and maybe even more tragically aren't aren't being believed aren't being heard right and and i included skylar on that because she had had a couple of incidents last year that really shook her up um, uh-huh two young men who are somehow still walking the earth i <laughs> clearly <laughs> dropping the ball as a father um uh. and so when she saw that and when we talked about that a couple of days later and i didn't see this coming i had no idea she was going to do this she actually uh-huh. posted one herself uh-huh. Uh, hashtag me too. And I think she said something like there were two boys who were terrible to me last year and I was really yeah. afraid or something like that. And it was, uh-huh. and I had no idea she was going to do it. It was kind of funny. Uh, it was in the morning. She was going to get in the shower. So I was like, all right, well, I'll wait for you. And I'm eating breakfast and the door closes. And like a minute later that popped up on Facebook. Oh, wow. I was like, she just posted that and then got in the shower. It was very, <laughs> yeah, well, it's time for this now. Yeah, um, this is what we do. But a lot of people responded to it. I think a lot of people kind of saw the difficulty for someone like Skylar. Yeah. Um, who is already – it's hard for her to communicate. It's hard for her sometimes to understand those bigger social issues. And I think people just mm-hmm. kind of take it for granted. You know, Skylar turns 18 in a couple of months. But I know. I'm yeah. <laughs> kind of have to start drinking again. Welcome um, to a whole other level of fear now. And But in a lot of ways, I think she's still sort of, I don't know, treated like a child by the world and probably by myself as well. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. certainly guilty of it. Yeah. That, which I think it's is hard why, not to. Which I think is why this whole, this when this happened, it kind of shook me up a little bit. 
Um, you know, it's really easy for some people to look at someone like Skylar and think of someone who's much, much younger. She presents mm-hmm. younger. Uh, her comprehension of just social issues and things around her is probably a little bit younger. And it's really easy to forget that, I mean, she's a she's a young woman and that the, the issues that are out there for all women are issues for her. And, yeah. you know, and we've talked about the statistics on uh, sexual abuse and sexual harassment for uh, mm-hmm. sexual assault for for uh, women with, uh, with disabilities, particularly in intellectual disabilities. So it's easy to see why this keeps me up, <laughs> you know, that this is something that every time Skylar goes out into the world, it is a challenge to my trust, not of her, this absolutely not of her, but my trust mm-hmm. of sort of the world at large, that the world's not going to eat her up, you know? Am I sending her out to the wolves or am I sending, is this just what her independent life is going to look like? And the Me Too campaign sort of was a good reminder of, oh, yeah, that's that there. there's big stuff out there and it's it is scary. So it's hard for me to kind of trust the way that I want to. And the flip side of that is, and this happened last night, so this is new. I, if, we'd, if we'd had this conversation yesterday, I would have been all, but <laughs> everything's terrible. Uh-huh. And then last night as I was uh, driving home from work, not checking my text messages, of course, because, uh, yeah. you know, that's bad. But <laughs> I was totally tec- checking my text messages and received a text message from Skylar's band director. Yeah. Telling me that uh, a boy in the band, a boy in the in the drum line, actually uh-huh. had invited, had asked Skylar to go to homecoming with him. Aww. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's a big deal, and and it's sad because she, she's been asking him, "I want to go to homecoming. How do I go to homecoming?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm like, oh, I, I mean, you know." And I was, let me go, go on record as saying, when I was in high school, I was not the catch of the day. I was not. <laughs> You know, if I went, I don't even remember if I went to homecoming. I don't Uh think I did. If I did, it was after asking like 70 girls and someone just, someone was like, if I go to homecoming with you, will you leave everyone else alone? I mean, someone took one for the team (laughs) if I did go. So I understood that sort of pain of, gee, I wish I could go, but. Uh Uh-huh. So, so the band director texted me and said that this young man had asked Skylar to homecoming and, and he was really positive about it. He was like, she's really excited and congratulations. I think she's going to have a great time. And this Aww. is a teacher that works with this kid. I mean, he, the, the, the band director actually was the percussion instructor and this kid uh-huh. was a percussionist. So he knew this kid and the message I was getting, the sort of subtle message was this kid's okay. This is good. Oh, this this nice. is somebody trustworthy. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know the kid. I went and stalked him on Facebook because I'm that guy. But, you know. <laughs> well, sure. I, I know what he looks Who like now. Uh-huh. He's little. Do you recognize him from seeing him at band events and stuff? I I, I, I think I do, yeah. I mean, he was never someone who jumped out at me, but, you know. And he's small, so if things get out of hand, I could totally take him. It's not one of these. <laughs> there, are a couple, there are a couple of boys in the band. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm going to have to get some friends. <laughs> no, but seriously. But, That's reassuring. <laughs> That was a joke. I'm not actually going to murder a kid. So if anything happens to this kid, you know, don't look <laughs> totally at me. Totally not you. Don't look at me. <laughs> um, so it was, it was nice because it was, it kind of put a different side to this because, I mean, Skylar hasn't dated. She hasn't, she's amazing, but she takes a little bit of work, you know? Sure. She sees the world differently. She communicates differently. She's just mm-hmm. a really different person. And if you're if you're somebody who can get in touch with that, you can kind of plug into who she is and what she's all about. Mm-hmm. Man, she's cool. And the people that yeah. know and people that know her are like, God, this is she's the coolest person ever. I mean, and I don't yeah. mean you know I'm her dad, so obviously I'm perhaps a tiny bit biased, but <laughs> no, <laughs> you know I mean she's funny and not like not like little kid funny. But yeah. just like legitimately a funny person. She cracks uh-huh. me up. I love spending time with her. And I've always thought when that person comes along who gets that, yeah. um, I mean, it's going to be like finding a diamond in the desert. You know, she's uh-huh. – she's. but it's been such a long road for her because she is very, very different. And the people that she meets yeah. are – you know, if she has time with them, maybe they'll maybe they'll get that. And that's what I, you know, here's a kid who looked at Skylar and said, yeah, she's cute and she's weird and I'm into this. Let's do this. Let's go to homecoming. And and they do this thing where they make posters. I don't know how other uh-huh. 
you know, they make posters with like dumb little jokes on them. And I've been watching these kids waiting after rehearsal, holding these posters uh, for these girls. And I think, uh-huh. you know, and, and Skylar even asked, no one, no one had a poster for me. And now oh, I'm like, man. I'm like this thing that was just eating me up inside. Now I'm, now I've got this weird mix of, yeah, this is great. And, oh God, yes. now this is happening. <laughs> babies don't yeah. go to, babies don't go to homecoming. What's this all about? All these all these fun traditions are are neat until you think about the kids who don't get asked and they have to walk every day and see that stuff. That was that was the end of the thing I was always on. Oh yeah, with my kids. I mean, I, I would. I'm glad they didn't have the poster thing when I was in high school because it would have been the worst. I would just stand there with this clever poster that I worked on for hours and you know. <sighs> And it probably would have been the the tenth one I worked on because I'd gotten <laughs> knocked down nine more times. That's my really sad story. Kind of I don't, don't need to <laughs> tell that whole tale. But you know, seeing yeah. seeing that Skylar, her senior year, suddenly having these doors kind of open up to her. Yeah. I'm glad she's getting this experience because the experience that she had last year uh-huh. with these two boys, girl, these two yeah. boys, and 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 neither of them were super serious incidents but they they definitely left a mark oh and sure that's been her experience with with dating life you know and yeah. you know and she's even she's she's got questions about you know is, is she straight is she bisexual so, i mean she's got questions that she's she's processing you know uh-huh. so we yeah. have she hasn't even had the chance to be treated horribly by a girl yet <laughs> which by the way i can help her with that one but uh yeah. There, I've got some experience. Let me tell you how that goes. Yeah. But, I mean, she's working this stuff out, and now she's working it out in a way that feels positive. Now she's like, oh, right. oh what kind of dress am I going to wear? What am I going to do? Oh, that's w- great. Why did I let you cut my hair? Now I got <laughs> this coming up. I mean, there are things now that aren't, you know, they're changes, but they're not bruises. And, yeah. And I like that. And I, And who knows where this will go, but... If, right. If she has this experience in her pocket, I went to homecoming with a cute yep. boy and he was mm-hmm. nice to me and I had a good time and I wore a pretty dress. And these are the things yeah. that she wants. She wants these very simple things. You know, I, I, I have all these big dreams and hopes for her. She wants to go to homecoming and dance with a boy. Yeah. And it felt like, and it felt like that was so far away. And all it took yeah. was one person to be like, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know. I don't know this kid. Maybe, but he looked at Skylar and he saw somebody that he wanted to go to homecoming with, and everything yeah. else, everything else can just go away for a little while, and that's absolutely. So this is a, like I said, this is a very kids. this is a very different conversation than we yeah. would have had yesterday because yesterday all I had the only thing I had was Skylar is now processing the fact that she was sexually harassed. What mm-hmm. a great topic! What a <laughs> Yeah, you know, how do you end that one with anything but well? And today, yeah. all of a sudden, because of this one thing, this good kid who did this not who yeah. did, you know, not even that he did a nice thing. This isn't a charity, but that he looked right. at Skylar and said, "Yeah, well, that I love that." You know, he's not doing her a yes. favor. He's looking yeah. at he's seeing maybe a little bit of what we those of us who know her have seen. You know, yeah. that, you know, if you're out there and you're willing to do the work, which he's already doing because they're in band together and they're communicating yeah. in band. If you're willing to do that work, then, man, she's awesome. And <laughs> and I'm dad, so of course I'm going to say that. But, you know, yeah. what? that doesn't mean I'm wrong. It doesn't mean I'm not seeing the potential for, I mean, she's the best friend anyone could have. And here's somebody who maybe now. Is 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 going to kick that door open a little bit? Yeah. And if he can do it, any you know, it doesn't just yeah. have to be those rotten boys from last year. Yeah. You know the attentions that she gets now that are of of a more intimate and personal nature rather than just her uh-huh. friends. That can now have a positive side, and it didn't even before yesterday. And that just I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'm very happy for you. It's nice to hear something happy. And I you know, um, and, and it makes me think that about everyone else who's out there who maybe are waiting for something like this for their kids. Yeah. 
You know, if, if someone's listening to this and they're going, oh, well, I wish this could happen for my kid. I guess all I have to say is if you had asked me yesterday, I would have been like, yeah, it's, it's never going to happen. It's awful. Yeah. I mean, I, my, my daughter's going to, you know, have 50 cats one day and no friends. And all of a sudden <laughs> now it's like, oh, maybe there's a track here. Maybe there's an opportunity yeah. here for her to live the kind of life that she desperately wants to live. And so I'm happy today. I'm, I'm yeah. nervous. But I'm happy, which I guess is what this is all about. <laughs> That's great. Well, you know what? Let's end it on that happy note. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I got one more thing and it's terrible. But we'll save it's it. It's like, yeah, I'm thinking about my kids and and let's, let's hope that that will happen for them once at some point, even though they're now in their 20s. But uh, I hope it know. does. I really hope it does because it, it is yeah. true. It is. It is. It was a, just like a subtle change in the world that yeah. suddenly made me a little bit less of a grouch. Imagine it's that. It's like that that piece of wanting people to see them the way you see them, and for what the neat and wonderful stuff that is there, and not the difficult stuff around it. That is glorious when it happens, and it has happened from time to time with both my kids, but yeah. man, it doesn't happen enough. It really doesn't. And it doesn't happen in the workplace and it doesn't happen in relationships. And I don't know how to counsel a kid about that. You know, I can't tell you, you are not all those, you know, it's like you're a, you're a complex thing. There's all sorts of things going on. I can't say, well, you're just a hundred percent holy, charming and adorable. Why would nobody, you know, you have to understand that there's reasons why it's hard for people. No, oh, yeah. At the same time, I want to smack those people because, come on, it's not yeah. that hard. <laughs> and the thing is, I, for so long, I've seen how well she does as far as she's like socially. And it's in band anyway. The rest yeah. of school, yeah, school's a yeah. school's a it's like running the gauntlet every day. So I get that. But band was always a place where she could make these relationships. And so I was always yeah. really hopeful that someone was going to. Just dig a little bit deeper and 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 figure that out. So yeah, we will yeah. see. Even if this even if this doesn't lead to anything, or even if she doesn't have the, a great time or whatever. Yeah. In the future, now when this comes up, I'll be able to say, well, you know, it happened once. Right. So right. it can happen again. And if nothing else, just enjoy the moment. You know, enjoy mm -hmm. having a week or however long it, it is till homecoming of hope and enjoyment. You know, we got to grab those moments. Yeah. She's got to get a dress and this kid's got to figure out the whole mom situation, which I guess is a Texas thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's... Google mom and Texas and maybe homecoming. This and... is like a little bubble of typicalness that you will be occupying for yeah. the next, next while. And you may... Wish you could have more of it, or you may say, gee, I'm glad I have to deal with this all the time. Yeah. Dresses and <laughs> shoes, I'm all over that, you know. Yeah, yeah. That one's pretty. Oh, my God. No, it's not. <laughs> I, may get, I may get left at home left at home when that shopping excursion happens. The dresses that girls wear. To, I, I'm, I went to homecoming in the gunny sacks era where long sleeves, long dresses, high necks, more fabric the better. Oh, and yeah. now I see these little girls in all these pictures on Facebook wearing these super minis, super low cut with their super high heels. And it's like, maybe I'm not so sad. My daughter never went to homecoming. It all makes me feel very old man, grouchy old man. Yeah. I'm like, do your yeah. parents know what? Oh, they bought it for you. Okay, never mind. Well, anyway, I'm glad to hear that things are going well. And I'm glad to hear that there's a positive spin on things that have been going on lately and i will be really eager to hear how it goes for her when how far ahead are we from homecoming now is this uh, like I think right it's the away first, or is it i think it's the first weekend in november so about two weeks okay. i guess from all right when this is being recorded well next time we talk to you we'll be able to hear all about it and i hope it will be a, a wonderful story and a good memory thank you i hope so too and now for our final segment today, we are going to do a little shameless self-promotion and direct you to some things on our sites that we think you should take a look at. And uh, looking at our notes here, <laughs> this is fully blank. <laughs> so I'm curious as to what everyone will that come kind up of week. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, do you have something you have come up with here? I don't. I've had lots of stuff going on, but I still have I still have a couple ideas in my head for my um too old for cool 
blog. So I'm going to be trying to write something on that today, and it should be up by the time this podcast drops. And if not, then you can just remember that warning label and don't make it go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm under pressure here. Exactly. How about you, Nicole? Well, it hasn't been posted yet, but it's will be up on the Friendship Circle blog tomorrow. And it is an article about the kinds of curriculum that is used in an inclusive class. So okay. different types of curriculum that students with disabilities can access Nice in an inclusive class. So I don't have the URL for that just yet, but stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> and I don't have anything new uh, published to mention. So, um, but I do later... <laughs> Later today, um, as we record this, I am going to the annual meeting of the museum in our neighborhood that I am a board member of and and a general member. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And so I just want to promote museums. Um, you should check out what's in your Thanks. area. And um, being a member is a great way to get some little exclusive perks and support your museum all year round. So I recommend yeah. it. And, you know, there's always, you would be surprised at the different kinds of museums that are out there and the offering, the offerings <sighs> that they have, you know, um, art classes and tours and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So you should cool. check out what's cool. in your neighborhood. <laughs> Yes, we have the, uh, in our nearby community of San Bernardino, we have mm-hmm. the museum, uh, the McDonald's. It's a, it's an <laughs> informal McDonald's museum because it's at yeah. the site of the original oh, sure. McDonald's. So there you go. So that was fun to go in there and see all the, the toys and that they've had over the years <laughs> yep. with the kids back. An important cultural That's touchstone. Right. You know, there's all kinds of museums for everybody's That's right. right. So, yes. Anyway. Yes. Good suggestion. So that's it for this week's episode of Parenting Roundabout. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join us every week. You can listen to podcast episodes on parentingroundabout.com or download them from Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe so you get all of our podcasts and mini podcasts. You could also follow us on Twitter, where I am at Nicole Erdix, Terry is at Mamatute, and Catherine is at C. Haleko. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter at Roundabout Chat, and look for us on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, YouTube, and Instagram, too. Best of all, stop by our podcast page at ParentingRoundabout.com and read recaps, find links on all the stories we mentioned, and talk back in the comments. Thank you to John Morin at JohnMorin.com for providing our in and out music, and I wish everyone a great week.